Family is the most important thing in my life and I think there's nothing that brings people together as much as food does. I really love making my grandma proud by using her recipes, tweaking them here and there. I think it's great to just keep family traditions alive. Hi, I'm Erin O'Brien. I'm a food content creator and today we're sharing my take on a family favorite recipe. We'll be making my Nana's new style albondigas. This is one of my favorites and we're pairing it with a bourbon paloma with Maker's Mark 46. My mom and I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. It's the place we spend the most time together, so it's brought us a lot closer. And for me personally, it's really a way to honor my grandma. She owned a Mexican restaurant in La Jolla and she used to serve this dish there. And so I'm just sharing my take on it and this is a way for me to keep tradition alive and to really bring family together. Okay, so we're getting started on my Nana's new style albondigas, and there's just nothing like this soup. It's so comforting, it's flavorful, and one of my favorite parts is that it comes together in just over an hour, so it's not a soup that takes all day long to make, but it tastes like it did. So I'm gonna get started with some olive oil. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. First, I'm gonna add some onions, then the tomatoes, and then these are the leaves of the celery stalks which gives it a really unique flavor. Mix that around a bit. Now I'm gonna add some minced garlic and some oregano. What I like to do with this is kind of crush up the dried oregano a little bit to give it some more flavor. And then just a pinch of cumin. So my grandma never used to use cumin and we've upped the amount of oregano quite a bit and we feel like that just gives it such a unique flavor. It's so delicious and it's just a bowl of comfort. You just wanna saute these until the onions are translucent, just a few minutes, and then we're gonna add our broth. And then you just wanna bring that up to a boil before adding the veggies. I like to do the carrots in first. So now I'm gonna add some potatoes and celery in. Here I have our squash and chayote, which is traditionally used in Mexican cuisine. It's delicious, it's really tender, and it adds something special to this soup. And then you wanna bring this back up to a boil until these are tender, and we're gonna work on our meatballs. While that's over there simmering away, I'm gonna start on the meatballs. And first I'm gonna season the meat. You wanna generously season it some garlic salt and a little pepper. I'm gonna add oregano, which gives this a great flavor and also some chopped fresh mint, which is our secret ingredient. I'm gonna add the rice, a little bit of flour and one egg. And now I'm just gonna mix this all together until it's well combined. So my grandma never used to add mint and one time I added it and we found that it completely changed the flavor. It still tasted like hers, but just updated, a little bit more fresh, a little more flavorful. And I think that just adds such a great depth of flavor. So I'm just gonna scoop pretty even portions, put them onto a baking sheet. Oops. They're all different variations. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of adjust as we go to make sure they're somewhat similar. And you just wanna roll them up and don't make them too perfect. I think this is a really fun recipe to make together. My mom and I make this all the time and it always makes us happy, makes my grandma happy that we're doing it together. My grandma used to do rice without it being soaked and we found that it took longer to cook all the way through and it was just not the same texture. So we really like this trick. And now that they're all done, we're gonna go check on our soup. Okay, so now we have our meatballs ready to be dropped in. The veggies are looking great. They're nice and tender. And with this, you wanna drop them in very gently and make sure they have enough space around them. So be strategic with where you're placing them and you just wanna make sure that they're fully submerged so you can take your spoon and move them around a little bit. And this part is really important. I think it makes a difference. You take two sprigs of fresh mint and just drop it in and let that kind of simmer with them. You wanna cover it for about eight to 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna check on our meatballs 
and they're looking perfect. Once they're floating, you know it's time to reduce the heat down to about a low medium simmer. And we also wanna cover those, let them go for about 20, 25 minutes. So while we're waiting for our soup to finish up, we're actually gonna be making a perfect cocktail to pair with it. We're making a bourbon Paloma, and this is a drink that traditionally uses tequila, but we're doing something really fun and adding a twist onto it today. So the first thing you're gonna do is rim your glass with some salt. So next I'm gonna start building the cocktail, and first you wanna take a shaker with ice and add two parts grapefruit juice, half a part of lime juice, a half part of agave, which gives it a really nice sweetness. So traditionally you use tequila in this cocktail and we're putting a fun spin on a classic by using bourbon Maker's Mark 46. I love using Maker's Mark 46 because it has a one of a kind finishing process that uses French oak staves, which leads to a much more layered flavor. It has notes of warm vanilla and caramel and that really complements the citrus in here nicely. We're gonna top it off with a little bit of club soda. And now we're just gonna garnish with a lime wheel. And it looks beautiful. I can't wait to serve it alongside the albondiga soup. We're gonna go check on it now. So here's the final dish. I can't wait to give it a try. It looks delicious. It smells so good. It's so delicious. It reminds me so much of my grandma's, but it does have a little more punch of flavor with the lime and all the fresh herbs. It's so flavorful, so delicious, packed with veggies, and it pairs perfectly with the Bourbon Paloma. What I love about the Maker's Mark 46 in this is that it's bold and complex, and it can really stand up to a recipe like this that's long simmered, it has lots of layers of flavor going on, and it makes the perfect pair. I hope you guys try it out and love it as much as our family does. You can find the full recipe on food52.com and hope you enjoy. Cheers.